Hello YouTube, well I got a couple requests to talk more about my transition after I got out of prison, you know from prison to free world, Kenneth uh, Ledford, he requested that, and other people did on Quora, many who will watch this. So I figured I'd uh, do that. Even though I've already done it, I figured I'd do a more in-depth uh, thing on it and uh, hopefully uh, be able to help some people understand what ex-cons go through and maybe even help some ex-cons. So before we uh, get started, if you're new, subscribe. If you like the prison content, share it. That's all I do is prison content. Haven't done anything else yet. Um, and I think I'm going to just keep it prison content. Like and share. All right, let's uh, get into this. You know, I am very honest uh, about how I feel about certain things and things I say so you know I'm gonna be completely honest on this too that's what I like doing keeping it completely honest with you guys and I want you guys keep uh, keep it honest with me you know so I took some core questions for me that was asked of me and I'm gonna take Kenneth's uh, question and we're just gonna kind of combine them One of the questions is, uh, if you're about to be done with parole, what would you do to celebrate? Buy a beer. You know, get some beer. Um, I don't know if or when I'm going to get off of parole. They talked about uh, taking me off of parole. I didn't even know that was a possibility with a life sentence. But they have talked about it, but they uh, said they're not sure yet. says when released from parole how do you let go of the prison mentality well I think with d different people it's different you know people build things differently and some people can't let go of any of the prison mentality I know some people it's, it's like they're still in prison and they still think like that in everything and they deal with other people as if other people are, are prisoners you know I'm not that bad but uh, <clears throat> I do have still some of the prison mentality you know and it's it comes up every once in a while you know it just certain things you know somebody may do something that hits me the wrong way or something uh, or I think they're disrespecting me, and so I um, I react to uh, that. You know, I've been pretty good about checking myself, though. Uh, I'm, I'm the first person that will help you if you need help, and I'm there. I'm going to do my best to help you. That's just who I am. <coughs> I'll go out of my way to help you. But at the same time, I uh, there's things that bother me, you know, that other people do, you know, and I'm sure there's things I do that bother them. But you know, it's part of living in the free world, you know. Is you, you just can't jump onto everything that it's different than prison. You know, in prison, somebody disrespects you. You fucking blast them. Out here you can't always do that. Um, so. 
Is there anything about yourself that you haven't told anyone? Well, I wouldn't say told anyone. Some people know this, and, and probably ex-cons know this, is that uh, about different people. But I have, uh, and with diff different people, it's different. You know, I know some ex-cons got out and said they had no problem readjusting. Others get out and they say they have bad dreams. You know, dreams about going back to prison, whatever. I don't ever have bad dreams of prison. It was strange when I was in prison. I uh, I would dream of prisons and and. But the prisons never look like prisons. Now here I, I've never dreamed of had nightmares or anything about prison or going back to prison. But there's things that happen that take me back to prison. It may be uh, as simple as people standing in line at a store or something. It reminds me of a canteen line or something. Uh, certain sounds there's been people tell me that I've they've been talking to me and I'm talking to them and then all of a sudden I'll space off and that's because something happened that took me back to a certain memory in prison and I will say that I was in like six different prisons my whole bit the whole time I was down I was at six different prisons but the memories that always come up is the ones of the walls. The first prison I was at. And it's just kind of strange. I don't understand it. Because you'd think it'd be with other prisons too. But it's just that one, mainly. I mean, it's a couple times I've had memories of uh, different things happening in other prisons. But it's mostly always the walls. How did I convince somebody to hire me? Well, I no longer have that job. It wasn't because I got fired. It was because I was having real bad health problems. But um, I called this guy. I'd been looking for a job for about a year. And I called this guy. He was a construction worker. <coughs> Excuse me. And he said, I said, hey, uh, this was like on a Friday or something. I said, uh, hey, I heard you're looking for work. And he said, I am. And uh, he asked me if I could do this, this, and that. Different things that he, he wanted to know. I said, yeah. I said, there may be some things I don't know because, you know, kind of knew, knew about all this. And I, I said, I'll talk to you about it later. He goes, okay. He said, you start Monday. I said, you don't really know. He said, well, I'm really needing a worker. and Somebody that's really going to work. And um, I'm hoping you, you're that person. He said, I've been hiring these young kids. And they just work to the first paycheck they get. And then they usually quit. So... Monday, I went over to his house, and uh, he says, uh, get in the truck, we're going to the job site. And I said, there's something I got to tell you first, and so I, I believe in being completely honest. So I told him I was in prison, and he said, uh, what for? I told him, I said, I killed a guy abusing my brother. He said, works for me. He says, get in the car, we're wasting time. That was it. It did take me a little while. But I want to tell ex-cons out there. Or people just getting out of prison. You can get a job. Don't give up. Somebody will hire you. And especially in this time. That we're going through now. Somebody will hire you. you just do not give up. Uh, you know. Show everybody that you can make it out here. Don't go back, you know, to selling drugs or whatever. I know that's fast money and everything. But it's also 
uh, chance of going back to prison. You know, uh, you got to get lucky every time. If you're dealing with drugs, whatever it is you're dealing with, you got to get lucky every time. The cops only have to get lucky once. So, it's better just to have a, a legitimate job, you know. That's just, you know, I ain't knocking the drug dealers and everything. I'm just saying somebody getting out of prison is best just to get a job. And uh, somebody will hire you. And you can eventually, uh, you know, get your life right, you know. The transition and all this, um, you know, when I first got out as a woman, there was two times that I was scared. I ain't going to lie. Like I said, I keep it completely honest. I was scared when I went to prison, and I was scared when I got out because I'm going back into the unknown. 29 years in prison, I don't, the world has changed. I knew that. So getting out. I had all these thoughts, um, you know, they're going to be watching me, I have to walk on the eggshells, um, if somebody else commits a crime, what they accuse me of it, uh, all these thoughts, you know, and um, was going through my mind, but uh, those kind of left kind of quick, it didn't last too long. Uh, but it was just overwhelming and part of it was because everything was new you know, the first few days it just the days went by fast and it seemed like I was exhausted at the end of each day I was tired but uh, it the when I first got out it was hard for me to just walk outside. I wanted to, uh, I mean, I just waited until somebody said, hey, you can go outside. That was, um, it took me a while, a little bit to get used to that. About a week, maybe a little longer than a week to get used to that. And then I would always go like this, film for my prison ID for the first few times for about I guess about a week you know I, it was just an automatic thing because when I first got to the walls you didn't have to have your ID on your shirt you could carry it in your pocket as long as you had it on you then they made you put them on these clips and they you'd have to anytime you left the housing you, you had to have them clipped on your shirt so it became a habit to you know I'd, I'd go like this for a while film from my prison ID but that went away uh, and the next thing was uh, controlling myself when uh, like I said being disrespected um, people would uh, I realized that people didn't realize it was cutting in front of people you know uh, cutting them off but you gotta understand, people getting out of prison, they see this differently. They see this as you're trying to disrespect them on purpose, that you're trying to punk them out. And the first time it happened, I told the guy, I said, hey, you think I'm a bitch? Think I'm a punk? And he goes, what? I said, you cutting in front of me like this? You, you trying to punk me out? Well, it didn't take me long to realize he had no idea what I was talking about. And so I, I finally said, never mind, just go. You know. But you gotta realize that not everybody's gonna be like me. You know, I was able to control myself in that situation. Although if he would have smarted off to me, it might have ended differently. But you're going to have some ex-cons that get out and 
they ain't gonna they're just gonna react immediately and somebody's gonna get hurt I'm just saying so I would I'd like to ask that people try to be more careful in stores and stuff you know just watch what you're doing um, I ain't saying this to offend anybody I just want you guys to avoid future prob possible problems in the future because there's ex-cons out everywhere I mean there's a lot of them and some of them like I said earlier some of them still have that total prison mentality like they're still in prison I thank God I don't have that um, that has to be like I can't imagine but um, the thing was I, I, I mentioned this in another video when I talked just briefly about being getting out you know changes in society I think it was called um, people uh, like the people I was with they uh, give me a phone this is just an example and as I'm looking at the phone stuff they'd snatch it back and oh, let me show you something and then they'd show me something on. well before I could get that down they'll show me something else and I understand it's like they's more excited about me being out than I was and of course they had to show me everything you know um, even my boss was like that hey have you tried this and um, like we stopped to get something to eat uh, have you tried this no well you, you have to try it. I, it's, it's on me I'll buy it you know people want you to try different things and do different things and see different things and one of the things is Bass Pro uh, I, I've been a Bass Pro many times when I was a, a kid, you know, his headquarters is in Springfield, and it was just a small place when I was out in the 80s, so they had to take me to Springfield to see uh, this uh, Bass Pro, and, and I'm thinking, I've already seen this place. Well, we get there, and it's not the place I remember. I, it, the place is huge. And uh, I enjoyed going through there and, and seeing it. But the point I'm trying to make is it seems like I was just being overwhelmed with one thing after another. You know, people showing me things, having me try different foods and stuff. And it's just overwhelming. So if I may give some advice... <laughs> If any of you all have somebody getting out of prison, a loved one or something, somebody getting out of prison, take your time with them. You know, you, there's plenty of time. You plenty of time to show them things, have them try different things. Just you got all the time in the world. Just don't try to rush it and do it all in a few days. And uh, that's my advice on that. It's uh. I've gotten a lot better um, at dealing with, uh, you know, I, I, I don't really, it's hard to explain. I go outside now without thinking about it. I do different things without helping, but thinking about it. Um, one of the things I brought with me uh, from prison is leather work. And uh, in fact, as soon as I get done with this video, I got Finished making this holster for this guy uh, in Virginia. A friend of mine wants a leather drop leg holster. So I'm going to make him finish that up for him today and hopefully get it done today. If I don't get busy doing other things, um, I work for my, my neighbor. He needs help a lot, so uh, he hires me to help him. 
<clears throat> like I said, he pays me, but I would do it for free because I, I just like helping people. One of the things, that's another thing. When I went to prison, like I said, I was just a farm boy. I, I'm just being honest with you all. I never grew up with a lot of crime. Never grew up in a violent neighborhood environment. So they put me in this violent, brutal environment. And uh, I mean, I just, I can't describe how bad it was. Um, it's just, it was really bad, but it didn't take me long until my mentality changed and I stopped thinking about, oh, this guy's bleeding, you know, he needs help. It's none of my concern. And I'd walk right on by. I ain't putting myself in danger by helping this guy. I don't know this guy. Unless he's a partner of mine, somebody I rode with, I'm not helping him. He could bleed to death for all I care. It's not that I didn't care it's, I ain't going to put my life in danger by helping this guy when it had nothing to do with me. Uh, so I got to where I would just hold back all any compassion I had for others. I got desensitized to all the blood and the violence and stuff that was going on. So when I got out... Things didn't bother me, you know, like if I, somebody was in a wreck or something, seeing the blood didn't bother me, you know, like it may other people. But I did have, slowly the thing to help other people came back. You know, it, uh, I realized I didn't have to hold it back no more. I could show compassion for others, you know. And uh, that took a little bit, but I'm glad that came back. It was refreshing, you know, to be able to do that again, you know, to um, have uh, empathy for others when I'd, I'd lost it before. So that was a good thing. Now, there's some ex-cons that get out. They just grew up in a violent neighborhood, and I'm not knocking them for that. That's just the cards they was dealt. So when they get out, they, you know, it's, they may not ever get uh, any compassion for others or empathy, you know, and I'm not blaming them for that. That's not their fault. And people got to realize that some people are raised in certain environments that was not their fault, you know, there's this way they was raised. And uh, so you can't really say well this person's a bad person or whatever and maybe they are bad but that doesn't mean that it was all their fault you know sometimes it's your environment like i said my environment was a farming community these dang flies i don't know where they came from sorry about that but uh so it was it was nice to have all that and like I said I'll go out of my way to help somebody there was a tornado went through this town three or four years ago and I went around helping people the, the strange thing about it was some people didn't accept my help and I found out later that it's because people are going around after disasters now offering to help people in return for pay I don't believe in that there's a disaster like a tornado or something goes through just help your neighbor that that's the way I feel about it and so when people going around after somebody's been through a tornado or something you know and offering to help if they get paid for it I disagree with that um, just help your neighbor that's a, you know 
it, it kind of tells you the way this world is taken, you know, turned to. So anyway, Kenneth, I hope I've answered your questions. If I haven't, just let me know and I can answer them in a comment, whatever. Um, but I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Thank you.